Hey everybody, it's Dr. Matthew Herdert here again, founder of thrivingdiabetics.com and the Freedom from Diabetes program. And um, today I'm here speaking loudly and uh, steadily so that I try and cover the music in the background because I don't want the YouTube censors to nail me on this one. It's incidental music. Um, to answer a question that ironically I've gotten a couple times in the last couple weeks from a few of my clients, uh, two of my clients in my coaching programs uh, that ironically just happened to me here while I was working out tonight. And the question is why do I get nauseous when I exercise what's going on there and it's a, a really important question um, particularly if you're kind of getting back into exercising again because that's probably one of the times when this is most likely to come up for you and because it can be serious stuff so there are kind of five categories that this is most likely the answer this is most likely to fall into and there are sort of varying degrees of um, obviousness or seriousness here so you got to check in with yourself and pay attention you got to set yourself up well by always testing your blood sugar right before you start exercising so you have a sense of where you are and having your meter with you so you can test during your exercise if you need to, like if you get lightheaded or dizzy. Um, and then also, it's also important to, to comment, of course, that nausea can be a sign of really serious healthcare problems. So if this is something that's intense or keeps happening, that's recurrent for you, please go talk to your doctor, get it checked out. Um, if you haven't gotten cleared already, hopefully, yeah, again, if you're into a new routine and you haven't worked out in a long time or you're, or you're overweight, you know, please work with your doctor to make sure your heart is good to go on exercise on whatever it is that you're planning on doing so with those things said the first category is uh, probably the easiest one to deal with and the easiest one to be aware of and the least serious and that is stuff having to do with food or exercise so probably the least common of those is too much water in the stomach that can certainly slosh around and make you feel ill but that's probably not a very common one the second one along those same lines is too much food in your stomach that can also make you feel pretty sick if you're trying to work out and the reason I think that is also unlikely is because most people don't want to go exercise when they've got a big you know blob of food in their stomach but those are legit causes of nausea for some people the two that are more likely are not enough food or not enough water in your system so even if your blood sugar is good if you throughout the day in general have tended to have low blood sugars you know you've been dipping low first of all you shouldn't be probably working out that day but your body can be uh, more in a starvation mode where your muscles just don't have the resources uh, energetically they need to do the exercise so you go you start exercising and even though your blood sugar hasn't crashed right away the chemicals that are produced in your body as a result of that shortage can make you feel sick far more commonly which is what just happened to me is not enough water if you're just dehydrated so I'm in Northern California right now at an awesome conference learning more so I can be of better service to you guys and I did a really good job the first three days of sitting and you know drinking lots of water three but three of those big bottles of water during the day today I think I only drank a, a, a bottle I was distracted with other thing and cool people I'd met and the information we were talking about and I just kind of spaced on it so I was doing legs and back today and I started feeling yucky and you know kind of nauseous and I'm like uh -oh, okay so what's going on here I tested my blood sugar blood sugar was good so then I thought okay what all oh, right I didn't have any water today so that's probably one of the most common ones and certainly the safest and the easiest to deal with so the solutions to that make sure you don't eat a lot or drink a lot for at least an hour before your workout while you're exercising drink if you're thirsty but don't drink too much at one time I'll take like a mouthful of water and kind of swish it around my mouth to deal with the physical sensation thirst and then you know I'll swallow it slowly for the next couple minutes as I'm uh, as I'm working out there now the second most common cause in this uh, or second sort of category are those serious health care conditions that I mentioned so you of course want to pay attention to those and check in with your <laughs> caregiver about those um, your the third one are physiologic things some of which are very normal some of which are fairly uncommon or really only are going to come up if you're in a situation where you just started exercise routine again or you're overweight and those are feeling ill you know feeling sick uh, and that's a pretty easy one to check in about you know is your family is your kids sick is a co-worker sick um, you know check in with yourself Do you have symptoms that are probably not related to diabetes like having a fever or you know something along those lines uh, but again always test your blood sugar right away the second is um, things having to do with toxins being released into your system again particularly if you've been over if you're overweight or if you've not been working out for a long time the way the body protects us from poisons whether it's chemicals or heavy metals is it isolates them in fats 
So as you probably know, when you start exercising, you start building muscle tissue and you start breaking down fat tissue. That's gonna release a bunch of those toxins into your bloodstream. So you'll notice with this that you, after maybe a week, maybe even less, you stop feeling as sick or as nauseous when you're working out because you've kind of done that toxin purge. Now, if you're very overweight, it's been years since you exercised, that can be even a more um, prevalent or, or common uh, situation that comes up for you in that situation. Now, the last two categories, which are probably the most serious, other than those serious health conditions we talked about a minute ago, are high blood sugar or low blood sugar. Um, low blood sugar, I think, is probably clearer or easier to see if you're somebody who understands physiology or diabetic physiology. When you start exercising, your body starts burning sugar. And if you don't have enough in your system, your blood sugar is going to drop. So again, like I said, always test right before you start working out and have your meter handy so that you can test if you start to feel off. So you can kind of rule out blood sugar issues. Um, second to that or, or coming after that is, it, you know, having your, your, um, your uh, medical alert identification with you, whether it's a bracelet or a necklace or whatever that is. You know how people are tuned out in gyms these days, right? We've all got headphones on and we try not to look at other people while they're working out because that's sort of socially unacceptable. It's not the social norm. So you could literally, you know, have low blood sugar, crash, hit the treadmill and be passed out, you know, on the floor for 20 minutes before anybody even notices that you're not standing up and running anymore. So you've got to have identification as uncool as it may feel or seem. So people know right away and can help you get help as quickly as is possible. And always have glucose tablets with you when you work out, okay? So if your blood sugar drops, take your glucose tablets. Simple as that. Now high blood sugar, if you know anything about exercise physiology or regular physiology or diabetic physiology will also make a little bit of sense to you. And that is that um, when your body, the hunter-gatherer brain, which has been with us for a very long time, senses that we're starting to exercise and it's not a quick burst like up the stairs or you know running into the house or something like that. It's like, oh, okay, we're doing something extended here. We don't know whether that's digging four holes to plant crops or whether a lion is chasing us and we don't want to get eaten. So what your body does is it releases a bunch of blood sugar into your bloodstream so that you have energy for your muscles so you can continue doing the work. So what people will notice, diabetics and non-diabetics alike, is you start working out and you'll have a little bit of a blood sugar increase. For most diabetics who are pretty well controlled after, you know, five, ten minutes of that, you know, it'll start to, you'll feel it normalize again. Okay, but if it feels like it's not normalizing, stop and test. There are cases under which it will continue to rise. Number one, if you're not under great control. Number two, if you're trying a new routine. Number three, if your schedule was off that day. Number four, it can be your medication. And this is probably a very uncommon thing to happen, but it's important enough, I feel compelled to mention it. Uh, if you guys have been following my stuff for a while, you know that I experiment on myself so I can be more of service to you guys. So I'm more familiar with more um, uh, resources and medications and that sort of stuff. A couple years ago, I switched to an insulin I'd not worked with before because I wanted to learn about it and see how it worked for me and it took me a couple of days to catch on but I noticed that when I was exercising my blood sugar would go up and then keep going up and up and up and up in fact the third day when I finally sat down to figure out what was going on with this my blood sugar was just over 300 and that as you probably know for me is twice again what my normal level is so I went online to do a little research and found a site where they were doing informal research uh, data collection and I can't remember now if it was 11 or 12 percent of respondents in that survey said that this particular insulin made their blood sugar go up. So especially with, uh, with exercise you're going to see that. So just be aware that there are a lot of different things that can impact that. And remember guys, high blood sugar will kill you slowly and in a really ugly way uh, low blood sugar will kill you right away. So you've really got to have your own back with this. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing a routine, how long you've had diabetes, how comfortable you are with your management. Don't be cavalier about this stuff. If you're starting to feel yucky when you're working out, I, can you tell I have little kids if you're starting to feel yucky, if you're starting to feel sick or nauseous when you're working out, when you're working out, then you just gotta stop and uh, test your blood sugar. So my battery's about to die. I'm probably gonna get nailed by the sensors here anyway. Friends are making faces at me on the other side of the mirror here, but I'm really excited to be here at this conference, learning more stuff to be a better service to you guys. I feel alive, I'm thriving, I'm really excited about it, and I hope wherever you guys are in the world, 
Today I want you to go out and I want you to do one thing that gets you that thriving back in your life. You know, time, intimate time with your kids or your partner, um, you know, contributing to something new at work or, you know, going water skiing or swimming or something, some play that makes you feel alive you haven't done in a long time. So um, blessings to you guys. Thanks for tuning. I hope that was helpful. I'm sorry for all the goofiness going on around me and um, hope you guys have a beautiful day. And until next time I see you, go out there, be well and thrive.